Hi everyone, my name is Audrey and thanks for being here with me today in the Tinker Shop here at the Children's Science Center Lab. We want to go through today our wind tunnel activity. Now this happens to be one of my favorite things to do here because it's all about engineering and all about just redesign and kind of figuring out what you like best and how you want it to work. So first I want to do a little experiment with you guys. I have two pieces of paper here and I want you guys to look and tell me are these the same pieces of paper? Yeah, pretty much they're almost the exact same size. I tried to cut it in half as best as I could. Same paper, same color, same shape, same size. So I want you guys to make a guess if you think this piece of paper or this piece of paper will hit the ground first when I drop it. So you guys make your guesses, this piece of paper or this one. Ready? And three, two, one, go! Okay, so I changed something a little bit, right? So my piece of paper, that I crumpled all up, it hit the ground first compared to that piece of paper that was still all flattened out. But did I change the piece of paper? No, I didn't add anything to it and I didn't take anything away. It's still the same type of piece of paper, but I changed its shape. When I crumple up this piece of paper, I made it a lot smaller. I took away what's called surface area. So when I show you it all spread out again, this piece of paper has a very large surface area. There's a lot of surface right here that can touch the air that it's hitting as it falls down. Now, when I crumple it up, there's a much smaller space. Only this little itty bit of space touches the air as it's falling. So I've decreased what we call drag. Drag is when some type of object has air moving against it, pushing against it to keep it from going. So when I have my little piece of paper, there's not a lot of drag. There's not a lot of air pushing up against it as it's falling down. But when I had my big piece of paper all nice and flat, I increased that drag. I increased the amount of air that was able to push up against it, which is why when we drop a flat piece of paper, it sometimes kind of just goes and falls nice and slowly compared to that crinkled up tiny little piece of paper of this ball that I've just made. Now let's take that concept and let's add it to our wind tunnel. In our wind tunnel, we have two forces at play. We already talked about one. We talked about drag and that air that's moving. When we turn our fan on, that air is pushing up. It's creating a lot of excess drag around whatever objects we might put in it. The other force is bringing things down. It's that force that when I jump up, I always come back down, right? You guys can try it. Are you ready to jump up? And I hope you came back down to the floor. So that force is gravity. Gravity is that invisible force all around us that pulls us down to the earth, pulls objects downwards when we drop them. So we're going to have those two forces kind of compete today. We're going to see if we can get objects to have gravity pull them down a little bit and have that moving air push up and see if we can get them to balance out and have our objects kind of just hover right in the middle. So right now, gravity's winning. It's, there's not enough drag to push my object upwards with that moving air. But we're gonna create some objects and put them in this wind tunnel and see what happens. Now, I've done a little bit of the engineering design process already, and I've come up with two designs of types of hovercrafts that I think will be able to fight gravity and work with that moving air, work with that drag, that pushing air up against it to see if they'll float. My first one, I took a dome lid, like you might find like on a Slurpee, and I've put holes in the side and added two popsicle sticks. So this is my first design. And my second design, I decided I'd go with paper again, try that out. But instead of just crumpling it up, I've cut it into the shape of maybe you, I call these little helicopters, like if you see outside from trees, those little plant seeds that fall and kind of spin and look like helicopters. I tried to make something similar with a piece of paper and one paper clip. So I've used four different items and two different designs. And I wanna see which one will work better to kind of fight that gravity and fight that moving air pressure. Now, I want you guys to think, which one do you think will hover best? Hovering is meaning it's kind of just gonna stay right in the middle. It's not gonna fly all the way up and it's not gonna sink. What do you guys think? Is it gonna be my dome lid or my piece of paper? Hmm, let's get a closer look and try it out. All right, test number one with our dome plastic lid. Let's see where it goes. Can you guys see that? It kind of was sitting in the middle. It went up and went down. Let's try again. Make a little adjustment. Push my popsicle sticks. Get it just right. All right. Let's see. 
oh can you guys see that now? now it's starting to spin around but it's kind of staying right in this level. so i'd say gravity kind of winning it pulls it down some it didn't shoot all the way up but it definitely has the ability to catch that air it has some drag so that it's staying right in the middle so now let's try out our piece of paper with our little paper clip you ready all right whoa did you guys see that it was pretty fast let's try again that time it almost touched the ceiling so this one was able to fight gravity really well and be pushed all the way up with that moving air. And then when it came out of the wind tunnel, gravity was able to bring it back down. So you guys can try and make your own hovercrafts and see what type of design works best for you. So there are these invisible forces all around us. There's gravity, there's that moving air pressure that allowed us in our wind tunnel to get objects to hover, to kind of stay right in the middle. Now, I think this one was my favorite just because it was cool to see go all the way up and then spin and come back down. But if you guys want to try this at home, you can use any day craft materials to make your own hovercraft and see if you can get that object to float. Um, if you have like a fan, you can try it above or even see if you just can drop it from your arms height and see what happens, what moves faster, what moves slower and how much drag can you add to that object to stop it from hitting the ground as fast as it can. Thanks for joining me here in the Tinker Shop. Hope you guys have fun.